Hi guys. Don't mean I follow the team. It means it matches my shoes. Right? Just heading on out to the shop. Boy, that's dirty. Someone clean that. Make it shine again. Alright, so today is a makeup video for yesterday because I wasn't available. I am stepping into my newly remodeled or renovated or reorganized workshop. So I'm going to sit down and kind of give you guys a look-see. So this is the doorway. I used to have a, a thing hanging off of it, but I put it on the, I cut it down and put it on the wall. So then I can keep track of the different tasks I have to do every week. I just made a quick chalkboard out of um, an old draw, writing and drawing board. So super easy. I got my templates hung up, and my rulers, and then up here, I just have everything organized. All those brown boxes are full of rocks. So I, I do have quite a bit of stuff I've got in here. I'm going to be focusing on selling as soon as I am done here today. I have a commission job that I've been working on and so when I get that done I'll be posting in Rock and Raccoon. So that shelf unit was rated for a hundred pounds on each shelf but I'll tell you what there's nowhere near a hundred pounds on each shelf and look at how they're bowed. So I'm gonna put a piece of plywood on a thin, a thin piece of plywood on each of those shelves just to give it some added strength. I think it was like $30 at Walmart, so I'm not really out that much. I reorganized all my drawers, so that is supplies for silversmithing, silversmithing, silversmithing. This one is big tools like grinders, um, all the blades for the grinders, this handy dandy thing my husband made me. This holds a Dremel. That top section comes off and then you can clamp that to a table and then work carving or polishing that way. It's actually pretty handy. I just haven't had a use for it in a while because of the new setup here. Bottom shelf, packaging supplies and tissue paper, notebooks, and ra my random drawer because every shop needs a random drawer. And then looking back this way, that's mostly packing materials and boxes and assorted things like that. And I have my Dremel and the flex shaft hung on the wall just out of the way there. And those stripes running down the wall, those are magnetic strips. And so if I'm working with the Dremel, I can just like shove a whole bunch up there and have them accessible. Um, and oftentimes I will do that when I'm, I'm polishing. So there's that thing that was hanging on the door. I just cut it and then I put little plastic dollar store cups in there and just to give it a little more, um, just to make it a little more solid. So then you can see I got my respirator, which I wear when I'm working dry or outside carving. I don't do any inside dry carving now, so um, any little bit that I was doing before is, is now done outside. And then I just put a little like corner corner table. It's sitting on a little miniature table there. 
and that's got just stuff that I use all the time like um, plastic templates, my rock identifying kit, and slabs I'm currently working on. So then over here, this is the new setup for work, for my workstation. You can see I'm currently working on some silver. I'm making a really cool pendant for um, a customer of mine. And then over here, I have my flat laps, which I can work right here. So it'll help keep this area clean. And um, so I have an eight inch flat lap and I have a six inch flat lap. And then up above, I just hung a wire mesh basket and stuck all my um, spray paint. I do a lot of spray painting. So then up, up above, this, these are heavy, heavy duty shelf brackets. They'll hold or support my weight, which is a lot. Anyhow, so up above that, you can see I have art supplies, like paint and paper on this side. My carving box, which I can easily and have easily lift up, put up, and bring down when I'm using it. Um, then I got office supplies, my rock books, and my cabochon collection, and then more art supplies. And that stuff up there is mostly Dremel tools that um, I don't really use too often, so kind of up out of sight, out of mind. So because this is an impromptu live video, we're not going to have very much participation. Um, but I do have one topic I want to cover today, and that's mineral preparation of quartz. Now, last week I asked out in all of the groups, I said, um, does anyone have any questions and what can I help you with? And that was a question that we got. And um, I believe it was TJ who wanted me to kind of talk about how to properly clean quartz crystals and prepare them for display with cutting and, and all that. So I will take you out to my new setup for my tile saw, which is the only saw that I have right now and only saw that uh, I run in the winter time inside. And we'll pick out um, a softer rock to cut so I can show you um, how I would do it. I see we have some new uh, people joining us today. Welcome, welcome. Glad to see you're here with us. Thank you for the likes and subscribes. I just spent the last mm, almost 10 minutes talking about my new setup here. Oh, and under the table or something. I got that hooked up, ready to go, so when I'm using my box right here, I can suck out any of the dust that gets in the air. Trash can, boring, boring, water system for my flat laps, and a bucket for used water to drain into. And then, of course, my heater, which is on all the time because I'm cold-blooded. So we're going to step out here. I need to grab my handy-dandy camera holder. If you guys have any questions right now while I'm watching the screen, it would be a good time to ask. So um, I'll just go on about cutting with the tile saw. Tile saw does spin faster than... Um, a regular rock cutting saw. So you just want to be sure to go slow, let the diamond on the blade do the work. You don't want to force anything. The longer that you use your 
blade, the more wore out it's going to be. There's just a, some random rough to look at real quick while I grab a rock to cut. So I'm thinking gem bone, gem bone, because it's fun. And if I'm going to take a muddy shower from using the tile saw, I might as well cut something awesome and fun. Here's a nice little one. We'll see. There's a little indication of color if you look at the end. The red, that agatized red, and the yellow blobs. So we'll take that over to the tile saw. So when you're doing crystals like these, the very first step you should do is soak them in soapy water. Hit them with a scrub brush or toothbrush. Try to get all that dirt off. Then if they're iron stained, I use super iron out. And I, I give them a good soak for a few hours. And then after that, um, I will use the tile saw if I need to cut the quartz matrix that the quartz are growing on down at all. So what I did is I built a frame. Now we're standing on the back side of the tile saw. So I built a frame, just put a contractor's bag over it. And then I clamped it down onto the table. So there's the tile saw. Now if you look here, all those bottles, that's just old grit from tumbling, some of which I can reuse other I just toss but um, I had someone request to pick it up so I'm just waiting on that but so I've only used a tile saw in the garage here just one time and probably only for like 20 minutes and I got a little bit of dirt splattered on the brick but this is uh, the garage is completely enclosed but um, see totally enclosed but it used to be a carport. That's why there's a window in our bathroom. So it's kind of weird to me to see that. So what I have here is a bucket of steaming hot water because I'm out in the cold garage. And if I'm going to be miserable and getting wet, I might as well not be getting soaked with um, ice cold water. And then this little bucket I have to the side, that's where I put my clippings for tumbling. So anytime I have small pieces, I just stick them. I grab them off and I just stick them in there. So um, the best place for me to put the camera so you can see the action. Now I am going to be working on the side of my saw today so that the spray doesn't get me too bad. I'll have to lift that up again to put water in, but I'm just trying to make a spot to put you guys. Let's see, maybe come over just a tad more. Woo, we went for a ride. Okay, here we go, right here. So, I'm hoping you guys are going to be able to see exactly how I'm doing this. I generally keep my stuff pretty clean, but it's been so cold out here, I haven't really been bothering too much with it. I have a little handheld uh, little broom thing that I usually sweep everything into the bucket, and then I take it outside and hose it down. So right now, I'm just... Fill in the water to the top layer, right about even with the, the hole. So you can see that's the, the drainage hole. 
And the whole thing is set up on plastic. And then I have underneath, I have it set so that the, the wire or the electric wire has a loop on the bottom. So that helps so that the water doesn't run the electric system. Okay, that's kind of really important. So the blade is called a continuous diamond blade. See how there's no chunks or chips taken out of it. Some speed cutters, they're diamond, but they have notches and those are dangerous. I would not recommend using them. Now I have a lot of experience with my saw. I know what I can do. I know what I can get away with. I can touch the blade while it's on. It's not gonna hurt me unless I were to touch my fingernail to the blade, which happened here with um, an angle grinder. I'm still waiting on my fingernail to come back in. That was months ago. So what we have here, you can see there's a fracture line there. So I want to cut that, cut that just clean off. Is it kind of going around the bone? So it's gonna get really loud. So what I'll, I'll, I'll do is I'll tell you, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna line it up. So that it's just nice and lined up. These tile saws come with a blade guard that you can put like here, and then you can push your stone against it and always have the same thickness. I'm lazy and I think I lost the blade guard for this saw, so I don't bother with it. If you get really good at doing it, you can do it by eye, but it still is not gonna be exact. Now, I took the brushes off this that I had to protect the water from spraying everywhere. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do, because I did that um, and I haven't replaced it yet, is I'm gonna stand behind you on the side and I'm going to work like this, maybe, if I can do that with the camera set up. That's how I have been doing it. And it allows the water to flow away from me and not soak me when it's 20 degrees outside here. Okay, guys, any guesses? what it's going to look like. Anyone want to pop in, chime in? Feel free. Uh, I'll cut both ends so you can get a C. So the cell structure is what those dots are and then inside of that. So you'll it'll really become apparent once it gets cut. I'm going to go ahead and turn that on now and you can do this um, for cutting crystals, cutting matrix, everything. Just be careful, wear eye protection. I have glasses on, they're safety rated. And uh, protect your hand. Don't let your fingernails touch the blade because it will, it'll cut into your nail bed and that's no fun. But otherwise your skin can pretty much touch it and it's not gonna harm you. So here we go, loud. And there goes the dirty water. So you can see why I have plastic on everything. Now I'm hoping and praying that the angle is good so we're not going to get spray onto the camera itself. Let me go ahead and start making that first cut. over a little hope you could see uh, the motion that I use the back and forth um, if you look at the blade there is diamond on the outside 
Okay, goes down about three, maybe, maybe three eighths of an inch. And by doing that motion of rubbing back and forth, I get rid of the kerf, which kerf means Kerf means it's it's just the blade marks that are left. So now you can see no blade marks. I'm going to rinse it off for you. Okay. And then I'll hold it up. All right. So a little bit of green, a little bit of yellow, and a little bit of red. This one is a really nice cutter. And then I'm going to cut the back end now. This is the piece that was cut off. Nice solid agate. Nice and hard. Okay. What do you do when you can't cut through the whole stone? What you're going to do is you're going to very carefully line it up and rotate it nice and slow. And that's going to allow you that extra distance, extra length on cutting. Whenever that happens, you always have to do a little bit of a cleanup and get rid of those kerf lines. Okay, Let's see what we got here. Looks like some spider webbing. The clear agate causes spider web effect. That is solid. Nice hard agate. So spider webbing is just means that the the bone, the cell structure, shows up and then it's got the clear chalcedony filling in the holes. Sorry, I'm trying to. The lighting out here isn't the best. So that's a pretty fun one. So I do have some uh, gem bone available if anyone's interested in making a purchase. I'm going to go ahead and head into the workshop now. Everything's turned off. So it's really simple. You just don't want to push your material into the blade. You want to kind of let that blade chew it down nice and slow. Let the diamonds do the work. So I do have a few totes full of rocks that I'm going to be posting for sale on my Rock and Raccoon Facebook page. The lighting is so much better in here. And my camera is so covered in spray. I'm going to take you guys out. I don't know, Jason, why you keep saying that. Obviously, I either you haven't ever seen my videos or something.
Or maybe you missed the first part where I was talking about how my setup is. Everything's fine. It's just the way it is. So, we are going to do a giveaway since we actually do have quite a few members watching. I always like to do giveaways and I think then we'll conclude the video because I do have a huge box of iris agates that I just got in and those have to go out to my buyers right away and I will additionally have them posted on my Rock and Raccoon page. Um, they'll be $40 each or two for 30 and that includes shipping. So everybody check in. You can see I've already written a number down in preparation and tore it off. So I'll just go ahead and write your name down and the number you pick. Pick a number between one and a hundred and go. Dosa, 42, Kirsty, 77, Hack Micron, seventy-one. There's seven of you guys here watching live right now. We have three people participating. We got four more of you guys. Uh, if you open up where it says live chat, then you can type it in. Jason, 21. That's good. I did say one to 100, so lots of numbers left to choose from. Anyone else? I'm only going to give you another minute, and then I will move on. I do have a commission job I have to get finished and in hand to the owner tomorrow. And then I got to start selling some of my my minerals. This one is a rainbow quartz from Pakistan. Pretty cool little specimen. And this one Aquamarine from Pakistan on quartz. Look at those books. Very nice piece. Is everybody done guessing? We have eight on board right now. We only have four guesses. That leaves four of our wonderful watchers that should pick a number. This one is black cap tourmaline. Or gr sorry, green cap tourmaline on quartz matrix. I don't have my bright flashlight here, but if I shine the light on it, it these light up green. Gorgeous, right? I am moving these for a friend of mine. So those will be available on Rock and Raccoon probably sometime in the next couple of days. Well, I guess if no one else is going to make a guess, we'll go ahead and do the drawing right now. The drawing is going to be for a $10 gift certificate, good for one year at Rock and Raccoon, which is on Facebook. So you'll have to go look me up. Going once, going twice. No other guessers. Okay then, here we go. What do you guys think it is? Any good guesses? Do you guys want to see my gross fingernail I almost cut off? Probably not. All right, I'm super excited. Who's gonna be the lucky winner? The number is 47. Lucky number 47. So looking at the list, looks like Boo Dosa, you're the winner. Congratulations. Uh, if you can send me a private message on Facebook with your real name uh, and your mailing address, and um, then go ahead and like Rockin' Raccoon on Facebook. Here's the spelling, Rockin' 
raccoon. That's me. So without anything else to talk about, you guys, um, plus I have that huge order I need to go get uh, sorted and shipped. I hope you learned something today. I hope you had um, a good time. Jason, thanks for the feedback. And uh, yeah, anytime you can protect yourself from getting sprayed with dirty water is definitely a good thing. You're a follower. Awesome. Awesome. So thank you guys. I thank you, Kirsty. Have an awesome weekend. Oh, everything's going to get better, guys. It's got to, right? Have a great rest of your day. Take care. Keep on rocking. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video.